Hello everyone, I'm going to present uh, my paper called uh, Polarization Image Sensor-Based Laser Scanner for Reflective Metals, Architecture and Implementation. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jaime Marco Rider. Uh, this is a picture of me. I'm a PhD candidate at the Robotics and Automation Research Group of the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering here at uh, NTNU the Norwegian University of uh, Science and Technology, and we are located in Trondheim, Norway. Uh, the, the two other uh, authors of this paper are my co-supervisor, Associate uh, Professor Lars Tingelstad, and my main supervisor, Professor Ulla Fegeland. As an introduction, I'm going to make an introduction uh, regarding laser scanners. Laser scanners, or... Uh, uh, structure light systems are uh, uh, are made of a uh, light source plus a photo detector. Um, the most common uh, light source is a laser projector, and the most common photo detector is an image sensor. And they use the the so called uh, laser light uh, section method, uh, which. Uh, which uh, makes a measurement of contours and profiles by projecting a laser line on the surface of an object and then use an image uh, sensor to capture it. Uh, their applications are essential for many industrial uh, applications, uh, these laser scanners, uh, uh, like uh, inspection, metrology, assembly and welding. Uh, they are especially interesting in robotic welding uh, because you can determine the shape and position of the, weld group, the welding group. Uh, there are some challenges regarding these laser scanners because of uh, different types of uh, noise and disturbances, uh, like ambient light, uh, welding sparks, uh, deformations due to changes in temperature or bad machining, uh, mainly because of uh, the spurious uh, reflections and interreflections on the surface of metals. Uh, there are uh, some there, there is some related work to overcome some of these uh, limitations like uh, using uh, stereo camera setups using high dynamic range imaging or polarization optics but these kind of setups are usually bulky or or you have to use several sensors uh, special optics uh, heavy processing or they are challenging to implement in real time uh, uh, so we are going to be presenting a, a polarization image sensor based laser scanner for reflective metals. Uh, uh, we are going to be presenting the, the, the hardware architecture and then the software architecture. So, but uh, I have been talking about uh, this polarization. What, what is a polarization image sensor? Okay, I'm going to start saying that uh, polarization. Uh, refers to the properties of the light in the transverse plane to the direction of light propagation in which the electric and magnetic fields uh, oscillate. It is not visible for humans, it is not measurable using a standard image sensor without using special optics called uh, polarizers. The, the kind of polarizers uh, used in this uh, polarization image sensor are called wire grid uh, polarizers. Um, and in every raw image that you get from this uh, image sensor, uh, you get 12 channels. Uh, uh, here you can see this is uh, how the, the super pixel of this uh, polarization image uh, sensor looks. Um, and you get uh, 12 channels because uh, first uh, you have to, you, to do the, the color filter array the mosaicing, so you get uh, the green, red and blue colors. And then you have to perform the PFA, the polarizer filter array demo cycling. Uh, to, to, to recover the polarization information, you get uh, the, the 0, 45, uh, 90, and 135 uh, degrees uh, uh, of uh, polarization. So now uh, uh, I'm going to explain the hardware arch architecture. Um, uh, the system starts with the light source. Uh, there is a laser that is uh, projected on top of the the metal. Uh, the 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 light is uh, uh, the light is the laser the laser line is uh, reflected, and then the polarization camera uh, recovers uh, 
uh, the, the information. Uh, uh, the polarization camera in this setup, we have a lens, a micro polarizer, this is inside the camera, micro polarizer, polarized sensor, and is connected to an FPGA, field programmable gate array, that uh, sends uh, the information from this uh, uh, polarization sensor to a computing unit. The computing unit is uh, connected to a network, uh, uh, can transmit the information via network, and and runs uh, the, the software on its uh, unified memory. It's unified because uh, you have a, both a CPU and GPU. So regarding the software architecture, uh, uh, first uh, uh, the software, software architecture starts with uh, getting the information from the sensor using the, the FPA firmware. Um, this, is, this is implemented inside the camera but uh, uh, in our computing unit, we have a Linux uh, distro running a real-time uh, kernel. Uh, and then, on, uh, then inside this uh, Linux uh, uh, distro, we run a custom C++ application. That in this uh, application, we read the information coming from the FPA of the sensor using the Genicam. Uh, Arabic library, Genicam generic uh, in in generic interface for industrial cameras um, using Arabic. Then we all, we can also control the laser from this application, and then we have the the the, the image uh, the polarization image pipeline that uh, that uh, sends the information to some kind of middleware, and then it is pits it out uh, to, to the network. So I'm going to explain how does this uh, polarized uh, laser image pipeline work. Uh, uh, first, in a first stage, uh, you read the raw image. Uh, in this algorithm, uh, the input is the raw sensor image and the output, the position of the laser image coordinates. The first step is reading the raw image then come then uh, uh, recover uh, recover the the polarization information um, uh, by performing the po polarizer uh, the mosaicing then you demosaic uh, the color perform this uh, color demosaicing then you perform an image optimization and then you do uh, the laser uh, the laser line extraction in a column by column uh, basis and the output is uh, is one image. So the implementation uh, uh, in this paper, uh, I had to compare uh, the polarization camera. This is the polarization camera we are using with a standard camera. Uh, um, both cameras, they are, they, they are part of the I, Sony IMX2 family because they are quite similar. It's pretty much a, uh, the polarization camera has this uh, polarizer layer on top of the of the sensor. They're, they are very similar. Uh, then we are uh, for the optics. Uh, we are using this uh, this lens. Then a laser projector that uh, runs at uh, 640 nanometers. And then the image pipeline that is implemented uh, in a C++ application that runs on a Linux for Tegra operating system and it runs on an NVIDIA Jetson platform. All the aluminum parts uh, were made of uh, aluminum alloy 6082. So here we can see the comparison between the polarization image sensor and the standard image uh, sensor images. I'm going to start uh, showing this is uh, what you get from a standard camera. This would be like the raw image uh, E, then the standard color image F, and then the, this is the laser line you, you can extract from, from this image. And here, and this is what is interesting about this research, is that uh, what we use is a, a polarization camera, so, we, so you get uh, this polarized raw image, and then uh, you, you, you can uh, split this raw image into four color images with the four different uh, polarization angles and then uh, we compute an optimized polarized image and then we perform the laser line extraction on this uh, optimized polarized image. So this is a comparison between the, the standard and polarized uh, laser lines uh, 
as you can see uh, uh, where, with the laser line you get from the polarization camera you get uh, less artifacts and, and the shape is more similar to the real laser line uh, so for the conclusion I'm going to say three things under first under similar circumstances the proposed uh, novel laser scanner based on a polarization image sensor can detect the shape of a laser profile in a more precise way than a standard image sensor can when scanning very reflective alloys like uh, this 6082 there are still some limitations in areas containing great amount of uh, specular reflections and we can see here in the picture that there are still some uh, artifacts and we believe that these results are especially interesting for robotics applications like industrial robotic welding where measuring the accurate position of the corners or joints of the scan metallic plates is essential so for the acknowledgement, uh, I'm going to say uh, that uh, this presented work uh, was funded by the Research Council of Norway under this uh, project number 295138. Um, and this is my presentation. If uh, you have any questions, 